Hello, noodles and oodles. We are back. Another episode of Geeks and Barbells. Today is an anime day. It is animode time. And today I want to talk about not a very specific anime, a more broad swath of concepts within anime. Specifically, more tuned towards how old most anime characters are and why I think a lot of anime unfortunately lack substance, lack quality, many times because of the age of the characters within the anime. And I will also, and I think I will start with, the animes that do it right, whose characters age uh, is actually one of the biggest bonuses to the series that it actually allows them to work around complex ideas and concepts more efficiently because let's face it, children sometimes just get away with stuff that adults can't because children don't put up with any bullshit. And it allows you to sort of showcase how special some people are when they're younger. So what do I mean by age is problematic within anime? Well, let's face it. Most anime these days, I've discussed this before, most anime characters these days are between the ages of 14 to 16 years old. I don't know why, and it's not to say that there are not adults within these series, but the main protagonists much of the time are between the ages of 14 to 16. Regardless of how serious the material is, regardless of the situation, the job the character is doing, what's happening in their life. They're always kids. They're almost always in high school. And many times they are new to high school. They're relatively very young. You know, in most places in the world, high school ends around 17, 18 years old. Most people in a lot of anime don't tend to be that age. They tend to be first years, usually around 15 years old, let's face it. And these are the animes that tend to hyper, hyper, hyper focus on etchy, on, let's face it, fan service. And it's not done in a way that serves any purpose whatsoever. And much of the material, especially when it's more, let's say, leaning towards action oriented or fantasy science fiction oriented animations, these age groups make no sense. And the way that they usually navigate around them is by somehow making the parents be almost completely non-existent, not involved. Somehow the kids are able to not have any adult dealings, even in school, which are many times the school is there, but there's almost no view of teachers. When there is teachers, there's one or two, but they're not involved in any way at all. Many times the kids themselves are controlling the school somehow. It's things that don't really make much sense in a modern day setting. And many of these anime are based in modern day settings. But as I said before, there are anime who do this extremely well. I will showcase two. One of them is The Legend of the Last Airbender. So Aang is 11, 12 years old, I believe. His other uh, companions, we would say, Sokka and Katara, are very young as well. I believe they are two years older than him. They might be 14. So they are very, very young. And our main protagonist himself is extremely young, only 12 years old. And throughout the entire series of the Avatar, Aang remains very childlike. Not stupid, not foolish. He is a young boy. And at every step of the way, even as his character progresses and develops and grows more sure of himself, becomes more powerful, learns to understand responsibility. He is still 12 years old and the series never lets you forget that he is 12 years old. His relationships with Katara, his relationship with Sokka, the way he deals with political situations, his having to come to terms with concepts of death and violence, even though The Last Airbender sort of kind of skips over those things by making people magically not really ever have to die. You know, you can get a fireball straight to your face and you're fine. So 
this is a series that kind of cops out on some of the issues that would be problematic if it was more realistic. But overall, it's still a perfect example of how a series took a child, made him deal with things as a child realistically would, even when the situations are very, very tough. And they pulled it off perfectly, as shown by how famous that series is. It is done phenomenally well, and it is held up as in a very esteemed place as one of the best animations, if not the best animation, if you look at it from a, from a total perspective, ever created. Because the world, the lore, the character development, uh, how appropriate everyone is according to their situation, everything is done extremely well. They did not hold any punches. So that's one example of a series that, even though it is predominantly focused towards children, still makes everything makes sense. People don't seem extremely awkwardly out of place for their age group and for what's happening around them. Another example of a series which is a lot more violent, dealing with a lot more serious matter, would be Hunter x Hunter, where our main protagonist, Gon, is only 12 years old. And so is his, we could say, the other protagonist in the series, which would be Killua. He is 12 years old as well. Now, they have companions, Karapika and Leorio, who are a bit older. I believe Leorio is 19 years old. Karapika, I'm not too sure. I think he's a little bit younger, perhaps 17, 18 years old. At least he's a bit older, but still quite young. And Gon and Killua both grew up in extremely different situations. Killua grows up in a family of assassins. This is a kid who's been bred and trained since he was a baby to kill. To, he's, he's been tortured for God knows how long. This is a kid who is not normal. And then you have Gon, who grew up on a small island with no other children, only surrounded by adults, spending most of his time in nature with animals. And who's, both of these children are supposed to be prodigies. They are special. They both, because of their upbringing, but also because of their genetics and just the nature of the world itself, they are not normal yet. Even as they leave their respective domains and meet each other and go through the trials and tribulations of the world, which in this case would be the hunter exam and many other cases, you see them develop, you see them both start, although from different places, there's this constant understanding that Killua is far ahead in understanding the realism of the world and violence and death compared to Gon. Gon is much more simplistic. Gon is much more like an animal. Killua is much more like a killer. It's just how it is. But yet, at every single point, there's never a point where you don't realize that Killua is still 12 and Gon is still 12. As you start to realize the thrill that Gon takes from um, challenging himself, he's still a young boy. Killua is still a young boy. Even though he understands violence and death so much, he is still a kid. The way he reacts in some situations, the way he tries to figure things out, the confusion he feels is very much that of a young boy. And the series, regardless of how strong these characters are, these kids are still kids. They get their ass whooped so many times by adults and it's completely sensical 12 year olds are not as strong as most adults due to the experience due to the development of power this is not how the world works even in a fantasy setting it has to make sense this is completely bypassed in most anime series and even movies where young kids suddenly come into power when they're 13 14 15 years old and they are so op it makes no sense and not just overpowered in the sense of the abilities they have they're overpowered in how they react many times the kids who are portraying this they they suddenly kill a person for the first time and it's just like yeah i killed a person that's it no reaction then they'll become super shy and awkward and uncomfortable in any other social situation yet they can murder without issue they can be violent without issue which is completely unrealistic of course no, there has to be a reasoning. There has to be some kind of upbringing, some kind of logical rationale to why a child, especially when your series is based in a modern day times, why they would react the way they react. And so series like Hunter x Hunter, they fully make you understand this is the world these people are growing up in. This is how they've been raised. This is their specific situations. They are abnormal 
for their, their, their age group, and yet they still get their ass handed to them. And when they do succeed many times, it's through incredible challenge, tribulation, usually using tricks and deceiving people because they simply don't have the power to, to deal with the older people around them. They're stuck in a situation where many times they're going to get their asses whooped. It's just how it is. Um, and that actually happens a lot in, in The Last Airbender as well. Many, many times Aang only succeeds because of his help from the, we will say, the adult avatars who live within him, who he's linked to. They have to take over and basically kick ass for him because he simply doesn't have the strength or the will to do it because he's too young. He doesn't know how. And his companions, they don't have the power either because they're just kids. Sokka learns and develops and grows more skilled as the series progresses. He's a phenomenal uh, show of how development should be done for people without powers. Sokka's fantastic for that, but he still remains goofy, silly, kiddish in many ways. But he just slowly, slowly starts to develop and adapt and become more technical and learn more things as he's learning new skills and things happen to them. But many times he still requires massive aid from those around him because he's just a kid. Again, just a kid. And... This is, this is unfortunately something that does not get valued in most series. And so you come into it and you have 15-year-old kids who are dealing with scenarios and situations in modern day times that you can't relate to because it just, regardless of the fact that it's a fantasy world or it's a science fiction world, why? Why are children doing this? Why, where are the adults why would adults allow a child to do this? How, how is the, the perspective of myself as a viewer supposed to shift into this person's perspective when nothing makes sense in any shape or form? Uh, so th this is very problematic. And it is very problematic in other ways that I've complained about before. I will complain about again. When you're going to have edgy and fan service and sexuality within series, I'm not the kind of person who thinks like, oh my god, they're young, so there shouldn't be sex stuff. No, no. Sex happens like crazy, especially when we're younger. But in anime series, many times, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't serve the storyline. And it's actually not very realistic in how the sexuality is portrayed. It is fan service for the sake of fan service that goes nowhere. And it doesn't help our characters develop as people. If you're going to have young characters... One of the major points you want to see is their development into adults. You want to see that point where they do grow and become more adult-like and more serious in a certain sense. You don't see that at all in most anime series. The kids are just kind of like, they are how they are, and they're stuck that way. Even when really serious things happen, many times they don't change. I've only seen a few series kind of do that where they take a kid make really serious stuff happen to them, and then they grow as a person. I would say Gundam Seed did this pretty well with the main protagonist, although I am blanking on his name. Gundam Seed is very hyper-exaggerated in their emotional states in that series, but the main protagonist in the original Gundam Seed was quite good. You saw his development, and then you got to see him in the second season, or third season, I can't remember how it goes, where you saw his development into a much more stable, calm, quiet caring person because of all the things that had happened to him and all the things he had seen the deaths and violence he had been forced to take part of uh, you see this a lot even in um well i'm blanking on it now i was going to say code Geass. i suppose you can say code Geass, although not the main protagonist lelouch does change a little bit in code Geass, but it's more so his counterpart whose name i'm blanking on as well i will write down below uh, he sees quite a bit of change and development in his uh, in the series. But you get the general idea. There, there's a lot of series, I've spoken about this before, such as One Piece, Fairy Tale. A lot of the most famous popular anime, unfortunately, the, the main characters are very young and never change. They just kind of stay stagnant completely and serve no purpose. And others, where you have younger, younger characters dealing with much more serious issues, it's just they're kind of like thrown and dumped on uh, etchy and, and fan service and sexuality that, again, doesn't even make them grow as people. There's no relationships forming. I mean, if I was a 15-year-old boy and I liked a girl, developing a relationship with that girl would change me as a person because I would have to learn 
about working in tandem with someone, partnership, caring about someone else's feelings, their emotions. If we are being sexual with each other, that's a whole nother ball game because let's face it, learning about your own sexuality, your preferences, the things you like, what your partner likes, how to enjoy pleasure together. These are huge developmental aspects of our childhood leading into adulthood. Many, many people are stunted these days, even in modern times, because we don't get proper education on sexuality and all these changes are happening. So these things don't, they kind of just get thrown into animes randomly and they're completely wasted and don't contribute to the development of our characters in the slightest and many of these issues is because they choose extremely young characters throw in a whole bunch of stuff that makes no sense for their age group and then just leave it there and this happens all the time all the time and there's very very few anime that manage to navigate their way through that minefield and as far as I'm concerned, most of the best anime, the anime we all talk about the most, the anime we love story-wise, usually just don't put this stuff in. If they have a younger character, they do not deal with any of the sexual aspects of these things. If they choose a bit older characters, usually relationships form, very, very focused ones. So a lot of this rest of this stuff is just kind of, I don't even want to call it kiddish, it's just sort of... It's a way to draw in viewers just by showing boobies and ass and more violence without actually having to make our character actually grow and become a more interesting person as the series progresses in relation to all these things happening to them. So I think we would do a lot better if more anime developers just decided to make the characters be between 18 to 20, you know? Keep them in that age group if you want to have someone younger. And it's always, always better when you have a more balanced age group around a character. When everyone is kind of, you know, different ages. Some older people, some younger people. Kind of mix it all up. Instead of just having these weird, weird moments where it just like... Uh, I did a review not long ago, Kuro Makuro, where the, was it, the six main people who are fighting against an alien invasion are all 15. Why? Why are six 15 year old kids in the army fighting against aliens? And there's not even a justification such as, oh, because they're younger, they're the only ones who can like link symbiotically with a robot. The main protagonist actually has that excuse, but everybody else doesn't. They're just part of the UN army for some reason at 15, 16 years old. Makes no sense. But that's just me. Maybe I'm just anal. Let me know what you think down below. Like, subscribe, comment. Check out the Geeks and Belrose website. I am dying of heat. So I will end it now at the 18 minute mark. I talked a little bit more than I thought it would. Thanks for listening, folks. Later.